right in there. Because right there is the house. You see the power pole. And then my truck sitting under a power line over there too. So that's our only option. These leave a lot of meat holding on them dead ones like that.
ran the mini all weekend again this weekend all day saturday and all day again today which is, of course is sunday uh this was kind of the i ran it the first job i did on saturday and in the majority of the day y'all are going to see a lot of footage from that those y'all who follow me on uh, instagram it's cotton top three also can kind of see some of the stuff that that i i was doing uh, a lot of uh did a bunch of clearing some grade work uh some landscaping type stuff things like that all on this one job actually on at hollis for hollis farms so uh, uh you're gonna see like i said a good bit of footage from that and then so i wrapped hollis's job up today i was actually at brian's house working and then i left there and I also I cut some trees down for Brian too, cutting four four trees down for him. So I left there, went to the house, had to um, one of the trees I cut down at Brian's. The it was just a shell basically, and the bottom of it when I cut the stump off, the bottom either the termites or ants or something had done pulled a lot of dirt up into the hollow part of that tree, and I saw it through it, man. It it wreaked havoc on my chain. I mean it that thing. I I worked on it enough out there to get it where it would cut, and then so I had I'd already bid on this job right here that y'all just seen, and got it, and so I left Brian's and went straight to the house throw the saw in the vise where I could really work on the chain pretty good, worked on it, because I was wanting to run the 550, I didn't want to run the 572. I, I'd rather run the 550 as I would anything. I don't run the 572 unless I just absolutely got to because of the 550 is so light. It's got the outboard clutch on it. You can roll the saw so easy because of that and because and, and, it's light and it's powerful. So, um, got it cut and i still need to work on the chain a little bit and have a lot of time to really work on it but uh that tree right there i didn't have much to play with on that tree i was actually going to throw that tree right in front of that power pole there was an elm right there well the tree i throw the tree between the elm and the gun and uh i was gonna throw the tree when i looked at it friday i was going to throw the tree into the elm and when I got back over there today, I checked the, and right behind that element was a power pole and the power line, all that stuff like that. So when I got over there today, I checked the height on it to check where it was going to land at. And I thought, that's, that's not going to work because even if, because I was wanting to throw it into that element because to break the tree up before it hit the ground and hit the concrete. Because, I mean, these trees, if, if they hit the concrete, they'll bust concrete like crazy. So like I said, when I checked it, that wasn't going to be an option because that sucker was so tall and uh, and I seen where it was going to hit at and where it was going to stretch to uh, when I measured it. And uh, so I said, well, I'll just throw it right beside that gum. I'll go between the gum and the, and the power pole. That's what I'll do. And uh, so when you see me set the saw down, when I face that tree and I set the saw down, and what I did was I walked out there away from it to make sure that face cut was lined up where I wanted it to go. And I didn't bore the tree because those trees there are... I took my bench-made knife and I stuck my blade in it about that deep. There was no meat till you got on into it. So those trees there, I don't I don't play with them. Uh, you've, got, you've only got one shot. You can go to hero to zero just like that. And if you're going to mess with trees like that, you better have a bunch of insurance too. I mean, you better have some liability. So uh, I just back cut that one. I back cut it up to where I had about six inches of meat holding. And there was no limbs on it whatsoever. And I just took the mini and uh, gently ever so gently because you don't want the top to break out and come back on top of you on that machine that would not be good either and if you'll notice if you'll back that thing up when that tree hit the ground the camera actually jumped on the ground it hit the ground so hard but that was gutsy on my part to throw it onto the concrete because it went slap across the concrete there but i studied the tree and I felt like that it was rotten enough to where when it hit the concrete that it was not going to hurt it. And it didn't. The concrete on that far side was already broke up anyhow. 
before I got there and I looked at that and um, it didn't even hurt that concrete. It, the, when a tree hit the concrete, it just went in like a sheet of glass or something just um, exploded there. So the cleanup on it, the video for the cleanup was 14 minutes long. That's all it took for me to clean that up. They had a burn pile. They wanted me to put it in. So I was tracking across, across the little driveway over there. And I just got through pushing a bunch of rocks, a lot, a bunch of uh, number 57 uh, limestone. And I had a couple rocks up there on top of my idler that was squeaking on it. That's what the squeaking you can hear on it. And when I got home, I... I dug them out of that thing because if they ever get in there beside it, they'll they'll squeak on it like that and it'll drive driving nuts. But uh, the whole job, I had to tree down in about five minutes and about fourteen minutes on the cleanup, and I was done and um, and came on came on the house. So um, you're gonna get to see a lot of cool stuff. The road back. Um, you've seen in this video right there, you can't do what I, you can do it. What I did with a with a bucket and a thumb, but that's why I'm set up the way that I am. I mean, if people people they keep hollering about it in the videos, you know, I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake. If you can't see what I'm doing and you can't figure out how it works, because I mean, how can you take a bucket and a thumb and spin a log crossways? Or beside you where you can work it out between those trees like what I was doing right here and pick it up and, and set it you know set it over to the side and, and tote them things beside you or anything like that you know it's just not you know it's it don't work like that with a with a bucket and a thumb and I'm gonna show y'all some stuff on the jawbone the jawbone bucket uh, ran it all dang weekend pretty much over at Brian's uh, the jawbone's an absolute freaking beast. Uh, I did some things with it that was uh, very, very impressive with it. So y'all see that in some upcoming videos. So whew. let's say 16 minutes. How long has that been? So the video is going to be about 23 minutes long. All right. So uh, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all have a good week this week and uh, stay safe. We'll see what we can get into in the woods this week. Hopefully we don't have nothing break, man. I'm so tired of working on stuff. Uh, the fuel filters did not fix my loader either, by the way. Uh, so, got that got that going. Um, I, a lot of people's asking about J too. I'll kind of say this: uh, Jay's Jay's fine. Uh, you'll probably start seeing him back probably September uh, in the videos. I'm surprised some of y'all hadn't picked up on some stuff on that, but uh, I'll just kind of leave that <laughs> leave that at that. So, we'll catch y'all later, later, taters. <laughs>